Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well, we had a request to design a vertical icon menu, so we've done one here. And obviously, you can click on it, take people anywhere you want, like any other menu. But you may have noticed we've got no page header up here so we're just using this as the main menu on our site it'll work perfectly as well on tablet and mobile if i hit my f12 key there it is on a ipad air and we can take a look on our mobile and here it is on our mobile now for me, that might be a little intrusive on a mobile. I might come up with something slightly different for that, but it works perfectly as you can see. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm gonna go over back to the top of the site here. Over here, let's enable the visual builder and let's go over and delete this. We'll start from scratch. Okay, I've got a section here. I've got nothing in it. It's actually stretching the whole width and height of our screen here. I'm gonna add a new row. I'm gonna put a single column in my row. And we're gonna build this today using the fantastic blurb module. And there it is right there. Okay, I'm not gonna have a title. I'm gonna use this for my link right here. And for my link, I'm gonna have it say home. I want to use an icon, obviously. So I'm going to go to image and icon. I'm going to hit the use icon button. And let's find the home icon. I think that's what I used before. Great. As you can see, it's right there. There's our little home right there. Now down below is where you can put your links. I put it in the module link because that way anywhere when we build this, that they click on the module, it'll work. If you put it in the title, it's only going to work on the title. And we're not using a title in this particular instance. So put your link wherever you want to go in the module here. This section that I'm in is actually got an ID called home. So I'm going to put that right there. In the background down below, obviously choose whatever background you want. I'm going to continue using this 2424 gray that we've been using on a lot of the site. And there it is. But obviously that's way too big for our needs today. So let's go over to our design tab. If you want to, you can go into the admin label. We'll call this home because we're going to make several of these. And when you look at it on the back end, it makes them a lot more easy to identify. Great, well, let's go over to our design tab now. We'll make that icon the size that we actually want it. I'm happy with it to be on the top. Here's that width. I think I had mine, try 30 pixels. That looks about right to me. Obviously you make yours as large or as small as you want yours. I want it in the middle. It is in the middle at the moment, that's fine. And our little text here, you can just hit the paintbrush by it. That's the body text right there. I want it to be capitalized. I think maybe I want it to be a bit smaller. Let's try, try 12 pixels. But I do want it to be closer to our little icon up there. And of course it wants to be in the middle. To drag it up closer, if we go into the icon here, they've actually got some padding and margin but it doesn't seem to work very well for what I want. I want to drag that up closer. If I put say negative 25 pixels on the bottom of there, it only drags it up a little bit. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to actually write the code myself over here in advance and don't let the code bit panic you. It's just one simple line and I'll put it below the video for anybody that wants to copy and paste. So I'm over in the advance, I'm going to custom CSS. I'm going to the module elements tab. I'm going to roll down to where it says blurb image there because that is in effect the icon. I'm going to say margin bottom, margin dash bottom, colon, negative 25 px for pixels. And that's put it a lot closer to my icon there. That works for me. Great. If you want it closer, we can go back into our little text there. If we roll down, we've got actual line height here. If you start rolling that down, that will take it up a bit closer. I don't think I want it much closer than that. Let's leave it right there. Obviously, you put yours wherever you want. I think I might take that icon down slightly in size as well. So if we go back up there, try 25. Great. 
Well, I'm fairly happy with that. Then I want a bit of space on the top and the bottom. But before we do that, I want to have a different color when I hover over that icon. I want it to turn to a different color. If you watch any of my other videos, you know how to do that. Still in the icon under design, if you hover over the dark writing, and this is common to all Divi modules, you'll see some little icons appear. If there's an arrow there, we can create a desktop when the mouse is done on it. I'll leave it as the default blue there and a hover color. Well, I'll use the little default orange we've been using. So it's going to change from that to that on hover. Default time it takes to switch from one to the other with Divi is 300 milliseconds. If you want to slow it down or speed it up, you can always do that over in the advanced tab. And again, this is common to all sections, rows and modules. And you'll find transitions down here. There's the default 300. Let's slow it down a half a second for a bit of fun. You can slide, you can type in a value, and you can increment up and down with the little arrows there. Don't want any delay, want it to happen as soon as their mouse hits it. And the transition speed curve, easy in, ease out is my go-to for my hover effects usually. Great. Well, let's add that padding. And let's also make it the size that we want it. Because this is way too wide, obviously. So back in the design tab, you can go down to spacing. You'll always find padding and margin under spacing. I'm just going to give it perhaps five pixels top. Just put in the five, it'll put pixels. Hit the chain, it'll do the bottom for you. Yeah, that works for me, I think. And when we stack these on top of each other, I just want a little separator. So I'm going to add a little border at the bottom, just underneath spacing, you'll find border. I just want it on the bottom for this particular one. There's the bottom. I'm going to make it one pix. And I'm going to go one shade lighter with that gray. We used the 24, 24. I'm going to go to 47, 47. You can just see it on the bottom there. Fantastic. Well, that's shaping up. Now, of course, we need to make it the shape that we want it, or at least the width that we want it. So again, in design, we can close that border. We've got sizing just above spacing there. If we go in there, the actual width itself I want mine to be about 80 picks. Obviously make yours as wide or as skinny as you want. We'll try 80 picks. I think that's what I used on the previous one. So in width, I'm going to write 80 and PX. If you don't put the PX on the end here, it might put in percentage. If it puts in percentage, just select the percentage and put PX in there. Now, the reason I'm making it 80 picks is it wants to be as long as your longest link word that you've got in here. And I've got a feeling my longest link word is services. So I'm pretty happy with that. Great. Well, we've got our first one in place there. We've got a link on it and we've got a hover color. So I'm going to duplicate it six or seven times for however many links you want. So let's save our blurb settings. I'm going to hover up over it. If you have a problem at the moment, I can get to it, but it's barely visible. The dark tab for the module is just under there. I can probably duplicate just by hitting that. But if you have a problem, Hit the little purple down the bottom, go to wireframe mode, and it gives you a back end view. And here we have the row. There's our first, first blurb module. Remember, I gave it an admin label of home so we can identify it. I'm going to clone it for however many links you want. I think that's probably plenty for me. We'll go into our next one. Just hit the cog to go into it. I'll give that the admin label of services. We can flip back to desktop any time. As you can see, we've got six of them there. So in the services, I want to change my text. Of course, we're going to want to change your icon. Let's find perhaps tools. Obviously, if you choose the icons that you want here, great. And of course, you're going to want to change your link. I think I've got a services section down here and I'm looking to CSS IDs. Obviously you can put the URL of any page or wherever it is you want to take your visitors when they click on this. Well, I'm going to save that. I'm going to do the next one. I'm going to pause this video because I'm doing exactly the same. I'm going to go in and change the link and the icon. No point you watching that. Great. Well, I've just finished my last one there, but of course we don't want them all separated like this. So to get them all going together, Let's go into the row itself, the green tab. I'm going to go over to design, sizing. I'm going to use a custom gutter width. I'm going to slide it all the way down to one there. And as you can see, they're now touching. 
we've got that little line that we put on each of these but i'd like to have a little bit on top and bottom to round this off a little bit we can do this while we're in the row if i go down back to content over here in the row and down to background i make the row the same color as our menu there which is the 24 24 you can see that this row is still stretching way over here and that's a little bit too much for me obviously it's not going to work for our menu so in design we can do the same as we did for the module we can go down to sizing and in the width i can make it 80 pixels 80 px and it's now exactly the same size as our little modules here perfect well, we got a little bit on top and bottom there i'm just going to round off those corners still in design i'm going to close up sizing i'm going to go down to border i'm going to perhaps give them 20 pixels make sure the chain is checked it'll do all four at once it's nice to round it there as we've got a busy type picture in there i'm just going to give it a little border and perhaps a little box shadow with a glow just move this out of the way so you can see a bit better so we're already in border we've just done the corners border stars i want to select all sides I'm going to give it a border width of say one pixel just a skinny little border you can see it there that's not too bad just for a bit of fun let's make it the same sort of purpley color as we've got going on with our image in the background there that little spaceship or whatever it is i've got a free color picker up here let's go and grab this color and copy it i need the border color i can just click on it and paste that hex code in there and we now got it that same sort of purpley color just to make it stand out a bit more i'm going to do the same with box shadow and give it a bit of a glow on the background so just down below we'll find box shadow i'm going to give it a box shadow all around i'm not going to change anything else there but the shadow color i'm going to click on it i'm going to paste that hex code in there again well, we've got a nice little glow around there now if that's too much for you you can take the intensity down by pulling this little opacity slider down which will make it a little bit more transparent or see-through so it won't be quite as pronounced the background basically is going to be seen more through it i think around about 75 is what i used before of course this is entirely up to you okay well that's working pretty much now but i don't want it stuck in the middle of our page right here so still in the row i'm going to go over to advanced I go over to position i'm going to change it from the default to fixed and here it is over here right on the top left corner of our page now you can put it anywhere you want you can put it in the middle you can put it on the right if you want to halfway down the page bottom of the page you get the idea i'm sure i'm actually going to put it top left there but i'm going to drag it down a bit with my vertical offset And about 100 pixels something like that and then we're going to drag it slightly off of the corner there with the horizontal so let's just click on the little arrows and i think i used five picks before that's good great now if we roll down our site we want to make sure see it's disappearing there so it's going behind this section that's coming up behind it and it's disappearing behind that and that and that that's not going to work at all we need it to be on top at all times so let's go so we can a bit of it's disappeared there let's pull the z index up till it appears on top there we go that's fine and what z index does it tells you what objects are going to appear on top of other objects numbers with higher z index will always appear on top of things with a lower index that's good there that's good there great well that's good all the way down okay well we should be good to go actually one final thing that i want to do with this i might be being a bit picky now because we only put a bottom border on each of these the top one hasn't got a little segregating line at the top i'd kind of like to have one there really easy to do let's save our changes go back to the back end mode again or wireframe there's our home we'll flip it back and the only reason that i went on the back end is because when you roll over our little green row tab was kind of getting in the way of that so to put a border on top we know exactly how to do that design down the border 
We already got our border on the bottom. Fantastic. Let's just go to the top. And it was one pixel. And it was the third shade of gray right there. 47, 47, 47. Fantastic. That works for me. Great. Well, we should be good to go. And just before we get out of here, in these, I put those links with the hashtag. I've got this section here. If I go in there, this has got a, an ID. If we go over to Vanch, that's where you'll find CSS IDs and classes. CSS ID of about with no hashtag. When you put it in something, it doesn't have a hashtag. When you link to it, you've got to have a hashtag. So my about section is going to link to here. If I roll on down, I think this was the services. If I go in there, let's roll down a bit. If I go in there, this one I think's had a CSS ID of services. And you get it. FAQ's got a CSS ID of FAQ. And you can call anything anything you want. For instance, let's change this to more info. At the moment it's got a CSS ID of FAQ. Let's just change it to more. You can call it anything you want. More will do for me. And I'll link this one to it. Of course, FAQ won't have anywhere to go at the moment. And if we go into our more info, info one there, just hit the little cog in the link. Instead of home, I'm going to put a hashtag and more CSS ID right there. And obviously, like I said earlier, you can link any URL to any page you want doing this also. So let's save draft and exit the visual builder. There's our little menu. Home is at the top here. It's called section services. Got that little orange horror effect. That links to our little services section. About, I think that's the section above it. It's going to be, yeah. FAQ, I haven't got a link for that now because we changed the FAQ to more info, which should take us down to that FAQ. Fantastic. Contact will take us down that little form at the bottom. And home will take us back up the top. So there you go, guys. There's how to create a little vertical icon menu for your site. Really easy to do, a nice little feature. If anybody's wondering how I've created this page with no header, I create a new page here just before we go. Once you go to your new page, before you start using your Divi Builder, if you look over here, you've got page. Make sure you're on the page tab. Yours may be closed up. And the summary, little chevron. You've got template, you've got default template. If you use that, you'll have your header that you've got set for your site, whether it's the default or whether it's a custom you've made. If you change that to a blank page, you'll have no header and no footer on there. And it's great for sort of coming soon pages and things like that. All right, well, we're pretty much there. In our next video, let's just enable the Visual Builder quickly. If we go in here now, or we'll get rid of this menu that we just built. I'm going to add a new row. I'm going to add it from my library here. I've got a horizontal version of this menu. And that's fine if we look at it on a tablet. That works well too. If we look at it on mobile, I've got it flipping the other way around and sticking to the right hand side there. Nice little option. So there we go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you. or will make a little demo video like this one. So once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.